The Great War, they called it, the war to end all wars. The sacrifice required in military and civilian lives from a host of nations, many millions. The Somme epitomises the carnage. The men of the 36th Ulster Division were the only ones almost to achieve their objective, but at a terrible cost. Within two days, 5,533 of them were either killed, injured or missing. 73 years on, one of their number, Leslie Bell from Money Moore, returns to the scene. His body frail, but his memory fresh. I, we were the third lot to go with. The first two lot, they never got out of the trenches. The trenches were full of dead and dying. So we advanced over, got out of the trench, advanced about 50 yards. When suddenly I, a big shell came and wiped out their platoon. In fact, you wiped out the whole platoon, 13 platoons. And, you know. I was wounded in the legs and back. Uh, I lay in the battlefield from about half past eight till uh, four o'clock in the evening. I was lifted down by the statue bears, taken down till uh, the dressing station. I still think if we had I had the, the Redmond's men that day instead of the 39th Division, that we'd have took three for but what Garrison's men could do, John Redmond's men could do the same. Many of the Ulster Division advanced from the British front line of Thiefville Wood, the few hundred yards on the first of five German lines. It's there, where many thousands fell, that the tower erected in their memory stands. Gathered to honour them, leading Unionist politicians, councillors both nationalist and Unionist from the north, as well as surviving comrades. Proudly they gathered, rank on rank to war, as those who heard God's message from afar. All they had hoped for, all they had they gave, to save mankind. Farther north, in Belgium, a memorial to the men of the 16th Irish Division who fell in the Battle of Messine. It was the first completely successful single operation on the British front, the 36th Ulster and the 16th Irish fighting side by side. We Northerners know of the prowess of the 36th Division, to whom we annually pay tribute. But of the other two Irish divisions in the Great War, we have sadly, until now, been unaware, and it falls our proud lot to honour the men of the 16th Irish Division who perished here amid the blood-red blossoms of war. <clears throat> there is none of us so poor <clears throat> that will not do them reverence. Not far away, the grave of Major William Redmond, MP, brother of John. Aged 57 and too old for battle, he disobeyed orders to join his men and was injured. Men of the Ulster Division carried him from the front. He died from wounds a younger man would probably have survived. I think they've been a bit left out in our time and they don't deserve this because when Redmond brought his Irish National Volunteers into the British Army he was trying to place what he saw as an Irish nation state into the then modern world showing that it was capable of sustaining itself as a nation and I think the men who fought here proved that. And that is why, in fact, we have a Republic of Ireland today. It's only starting to, be, to awaken, maybe perhaps particularly in the, in the south of Ireland and also some areas of Belfast. Uh, whenever people of the nationalist persuasion in particular, whenever they go home after researching the subject in our offices, then they realise that their own kin were involved as well. And it isn't seen as being in any way pro-British. It's being seen as... Uh, in favour of the struggle against what was, was tyranny at the end of the day. In the green fields of France, the youth of a generation lies buried. The cemeteries, pristine and neat, are respectful, whispering places. I feel sad about the whole thing. Like, it's all for nothing. All young men, their lives lost for nothing. I feel as if it'd been awful if I had been lying there myself. I had never seen life hardly. Some boys only live in school. 98 year old Charlie McLean from Banbridge in County Down had shrapnel wounds and was gassed. He's searching for the grave of a brother who died. 